Rolling right along here on the Exam Room Podcast, brought to you by the Physicians Committee with the weight loss champion, Chuck Carroll. Thanks so much for taking the time to listen this week or give a view on YouTube, really, wherever it is in the world that you are. We appreciate the fact that you are here. Right now, we're going to zero in on asthma. You know, we hear a lot, especially right now with this global COVID-19 pandemic, we hear so much about respiratory issues. And one of the biggest ones, the most prevalent ones out there is asthma. And right upstairs uh, is Dr. Hana Kaliova. She is part of the team that just uh, put out this new paper, The Role of Nutrition in Asthma Prevention and Treatment. Dr. Hana Kaliova, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Chuck. And of course, we can't neglect Dr. Neil Barnard, who has also taken the time to join us today. Thank you, Chuck. This is really exciting research, uh, Dr. Kaliova, that you and your team have put together uh, for asthma. Uh, first of all, for those who really aren't too familiar with it, can you give us a little bit of background on what asthma actually is? Uh, asthma is a respiratory condition where the uh, airways become uh, inflamed and also obstructed uh, from time to time. And uh, 10 Americans die daily uh, uh, from asthma, which, you know, makes uh, roughly uh, three and a half thousand deaths uh, per year from asthma. And most importantly, uh, asthma can be treated. So with the right treatment and uh, right care, including the nutrition uh, intervention, uh, many of the deaths can be prevented. That's really good to know. Uh, I, I do enjoy some good preventative nutrition. So uh, I'm glad that you, you guys have put this together. Um, Let's talk specifically about nutrition here and asthma. You know, what are the do's and the don'ts? Talk to me about the correlation here. Uh, so let's start. Uh, let's start with some uh, with some in exciting studies. By all uh, means. So what? Um, Dairy is one of the main uh, dietary components that seems to be harming asthma. It seems to be increasing the prevalence of asthma and also uh, impairing the symptoms once you have asthma. Uh, one study um, gave to uh, volunteers um, a dairy-free diet for uh, two weeks versus um, a diet that contained dairy. And in uh, eight out of 20 participants, uh, the dairy in the diet actually triggered asthma symptoms. Wow. Eight out of 20. That's, that's right. almost half. That's a huge in percentage. In only two weeks. It was a short study. Uh, another study that was a little bit longer, that was eight weeks long, was done in children. Uh, so for eight weeks, these children were off dairy or uh, they still consumed a diet that contained dairy. Uh, and the dairy-free diet improved uh, the respiratory um, performance in measured by spirometry by, by 22%. Wow. Dr. Barnard, you hear these figures, and I know you and I have talked extensively about dairy on this show before. You hear figures like this. Any surprise to you? Um, the important thing is that it started out as individual observations. It was a person here and a person there who'd say, I got rid of dairy and my asthma went away. Um, and so many people have seen that, that it's great to see what happens when you actually put this to the test in clinical trials. And you do see a number of people where their asthma improves, so they're no longer using their inhaler so much, or maybe not at all. And other cases where the asthma just flat out goes away when they avoid dairy. And as you said at the outset, right now is a time where there's a respiratory virus. And the cause of death of people who succumb to COVID-19 it's typically respiratory collapse, mm -hmm. uh, pneumonia, um, also some cardiovascular conditions, all of which relate to diet. So uh, let's say a person has asthma. They're listening to this podcast. They're listening to what Dr. Kaliova was saying. They make a decision. Okay, almond milk is sounding pretty good right now. <laughs> um, forget the, the cow's milk products. And I might mention even uh, goat milk and sheep milk. Mm -hmm. They are still animal-derived milk products. And what we suspect is the issue is the animal protein. Um, we talked a lot about the fat, the cholesterol, the estrogens, but I am going to guess, uh, back me up on this uh, and see what you think, but I'm going to guess it's probably the protein that's eliciting this inflammatory reaction in the lungs, and that makes you a setup for further respiratory issues. So now is the time to ditch it. And I, I know I, I could just hear the parents who are thinking, wait a minute, I've got to give milk to my child. They need they need that protein. Your, your children are going to get plenty of protein without animal products. 
Um, they do not need dairy. They're better off without it. Can you talk, Dr. Kaliova, a little bit about the inflammatory response that the body has when it consumes dairy, when we eat dairy? Uh, yeah, uh, so it's it's the protein, but it's also the fat. Mm -hmm. So a high fat diet per se also increases inflammation uh, in the respiratory tract and in our airways. So uh, it's important to, um, you know, keep the fat content of our diet also also fairly low, not only skipping the dairy, but also um, keeping the fat content low. And that's important to note, especially given I believe that the current dietary guidelines are for consuming three cups of dairy per day. So, right. yeah. And also the connection with COVID-19. Uh, so the fatality rate uh, without any comorbidities right now is uh, roughly under 1%, 0.9%. Mm -hmm. uh, however, peop for people with asthma, it's 6.3%. And it's even higher for people with cardiovascular disease. It's 10.5%. So that shows us the importance of taking care of your asthma and of your cardiovascular disease and the same same um, is true for diabetes and our other comorbidities. That's that's pretty staggering. Ten and a half percent. That's wow. Um, you know, one of the things that we've also talked a lot about on this show before is uh, how effective a plant based diet can be as far as protecting the heart. Um, I would assume that a lot of kind of you get that same prote uh, protective um, element with asthma here. Correct. If you adopt a plant based diet, what did you guys discover? Uh, exactly. There are different components of a plant-based diet that are protective. So uh, we have known for a long time that fruit and vegetable consumption are protective against asthma development, but, but also improve the symptoms in, in people who already have asthma. Uh, the the effect is fairly strong, and uh, that's why it's even in the official recommendations uh, for people with asthma to consume 1.5 to 2 cups of fruit per day and 2 to 3 cups of vegetables per day. However, only about 12% of Americans meet these uh, recommendations on fruit intake, and only 9% consume enough vegetables, according to these recommendations. We hear those recommendations specifically for people with asthma. Dr. Barnard, do you know if that three cups of dairy a day also applies to those with asthma? Is, is that part of the recommended um, diet? Well, the uh, typical government guidelines push dairy for everybody. Um, and it's, it's really unfortunate they should not do that. Now, I, I should hasten to, to add that when we're discussing the, the benefits of getting away from dairy, um, these are things that, that turn out to be important in general. Um, d when people avoid animal products, their likelihood of developing high blood pressure goes down. Their blood pressure itself will go down to healthier levels. Their likelihood of developing diabetes will go down if they avoid animal products. If they have diabetes, it'll get under better control. Ditto with asthma. Nobody has done the test to see if uh, on a vegan diet, are you more or less likely to get COVID-19? Mm -hmm. Nobody's done that test. And frankly, I hope nobody does that test as a clinical trial because it would obviously be unethical. But what we are noticing is that if it, all of the signs point to keeping yourself healthy, all those underlying conditions that make a person more vulnerable uh, to the effects of the virus, they are all subject to the effects of nutrition. So put nutrition to work. Um, but you still have to do everything else. You still got to wash your hands. <laughs> you still got to uh, maintain appropriate uh, public health measures, just like just like ever. Uh, but plug in the nutrition part of it. And all the evidence that we have to date says this is a good idea. Dr. Kaliova, um, talking specific about asthma, but I do believe that one of the things that you discovered was that a uh, increased fruit and vegetable consumption overall uh, is associated with improved lung function, correct? That's correct. Talk, yes. talk to me about how that is. Uh, and that's correct. And uh, just to tackle on uh, the viral infections in people with asthma, uh, those may be, um, you know, more dangerous for them because they're uh, at a higher risk of developing pneumonia uh, and uh, respiratory distress. Uh, so what can people with asthma do specifically to protect themselves against um, viral disease? Uh, so Fruit and vegetable consumption in general is definitely uh, helpful uh, because of the high uh, uh, 
content of antioxidants and high content of fiber, all of which are anti-inflammatory. Uh, but I was also looking at some specific foods that might help um, protect uh, against viral infections. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is garlic. Uh, I found a review paper uh, and I found a, a fascinating uh, placebo-controlled randomized clinical trial using garlic in four, 146 uh, people. Um, they were using a garlic supplement containing 180 milligrams of allicin. So these were tablets that you can uh, get in, in a pharmacy store. Um, this would correspond to roughly two to three cloves of garlic per day. Uh, and uh, the placebo group um, um, just was receiving a placebo once a day for 12 weeks. And this was done over the course of a typical flu season uh, from starting in November, finishing in, uh, in February. Uh, and uh, garlic supplementation decreased the occurrence of common flu. Um, there were only 24 occurrences of common cold in the garlic intervention group versus 75 in the placebo group, so almost three times lower. And uh, garlic supplementation also uh, decreased uh, almost three times the number of sick days in the, in the intervention group. So garlic seems to be like pretty, um, you know, pretty good for, uh, for the prevention of viral infections. And the key is to have your garlic on your vegetables and not right. in a glass of milk. So another, another one is resveratrol, um, which has been found to be helpful against many kinds of viruses, uh, including influenza, respiratory syncytial vi virus, uh, Epstein-Barr virus, and, uh, and many other viruses. So that's another component of many plant foods, uh, like, for example, um, contained in peanuts, um, but also in grapes and strawberries and blueberries. And uh, a third food that might be helpful specifically against viruses is ginger. Uh, there's uh, one more paper on ginger. So garlic, uh, resveratrol, and ginger seem to be working against viruses specifically. A number of these things have been tested. Um, and I think we have to be cautious all the time mm -hmm. because people, it's tantalizing to think, I can still eat my pork chops as long as I have some ginger in a capsule mm. for breakfast. And I don't think we want to go there. So um, as mm. Dr. Kaliova says, you got to look at the evidence. Mm. Look at the studies. Look at the quality of the studies. Look at the consistency of evidence. Um, and none of this, um, it, Let me. I said this before, but let me say it again. People haven't tested ginger or garlic against COVID-19. Mm -hmm. What they're doing is they're looking at it, their effect either on immune function mm. or their effect on other kinds of viruses that are similar. And then when this mm pandemic mm. came in, they're saying, okay, here's what we know mm. from other viruses. Let's apply it now. Mm. Right. See, so that's where we are. We've talked about the benefits of a plant-based diet. Let's look at the opposite end of the spectrum. Right. So uh, the components that are super risky on a Western diet are the saturated fat, but also the, the ratio between the omega-6 and omega-3s, uh, fatty acids. Um, and another uh, important factor is if your diet is high in fat, in, in, it increases uh, your risk of getting obese uh, and also changes your body composition. You're more likely to deposit some more visceral fat compared with a person uh, who doesn't consume as much saturated fat. We talked about this. I believe somebody wrote in uh, when we did the, the Q&A episode a, a few days ago um, wanting to know about, well, what can we do to decrease the stress right now? Because it is all around us. And so, you know, let's kind of revisit that a little bit because this is still a very stressful time. People need those eight hours, perhaps now more than ever. What should we be doing, Dr. Barnard? Yeah, um, several things. Let's be real. There's only 24 hours in a day, but schedule your sleep, schedule your exercise. Don't overdo it with alcohol and coffee and stuff like that. Try to uh, eat as healthful as you can. You're not gonna be perfect. Forgive yourself if, if things are not going your way, um, but we're going to get through this. Uh, to you, uh, the both of you, thank you so very much for taking time to be here with us today, um, especially with this asthma, the respiratory issue with COVID-19, the coronavirus. I mean, it's so important right now. 
And so the, the release of this paper is just super, super timely. And we will link off to it in the episode notes. You can also find it on PCRM.org if you want to read all of the literature. And we'll also link off to this encyclopedia's worth of studies that you have brought with you today. So um, can I also mention one of the Yes, things? by all um, means. Uh, if people do go to our website, PCRM, PCRM.org slash asthma, they'll see information there. And if people say, are they saying, my son has asthma? or my spouse has asthma, or I have asthma, and you're afraid to go to the doctor in your community, we are now offering telemedicine mm -hmm. here through Barnard Medical Center, um, as, as we've, we've, we've talked about. And I hope people will take advantage of that if they live in New York, Maryland, DC, Virginia, or Massachusetts, or Missouri. Um, those are the states where we can provide telemedicine visits. You can see a doctor right on your computer screen or on your phone. I know a lot of offices are turning to that right now uh, during this outbreak. I'm assuming that uh, our guys upstairs are, are keeping pretty busy, huh? Uh, they are. And if for people who want an appointment, just call 202-527-7500. That's 202-527-7500. And one of our caregivers would be glad to see you. And we will also put that number in the episode notes if uh, you didn't get a chance to jot that down. So Dr. Barnard, Dr. Kaliova, thank you so very much for your time today. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you, Chuck. If you like that interview and you want more of it, go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Leave a nice comment below. And for the full interview, also head over to Apple Podcast and subscribe to the Exam Room Podcast by the Physicians Committee. New episodes with information and inspiration each and every Wednesday.